Hi everyone. Today Zaytun Dali is going to be held in English. Uh, we are hosting a French colleague of mine in our studio today, and we will going to discuss his first novel uh, in Turkish Sakar in English. Actually, this is my English. Clumsy or originally La Maladroite in French. La Maladroite, which has been translated into Turkish by Nesin Demiryontan, has recently been published by Metis Publishing House in Turkey and. Wow, also been awarded the 2024 NDS Literature Prize by Notre Dame de Sion French High School and Notre Dame de Sion Alumni Association. And well, our hero is in the studio now. And hi, Alexander Serra, and welcome and congrats, of course. Hi, Michael. Thank you very much for welcoming me. Of course, this is very mesmerizing book, uh, and I really appreciate every line of it. Thank you. And first of all, I would like to start with the main frame of the book and uh, start with its uh, content. Uh, how did you create such a book based on reality? And what was the real event? Where and how did you happen to get in? And what process did you follow in when you are fictionalizing it? Well, I would say that uh, I've always been uh, inspired by reality. So all my books, I, I published uh, four books, uh, were inspired by real facts or personal experiences that I went through. Um, and uh, my, my aim is to convey these emotions to the reader. So I, um, I discovered this uh, real fact, the, the trial um, of whom the, 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 the book is inspired, inspired. Uh, in uh, 2012, uh, mm. there was a trial in a small city in France, in the west of France. And I, I came across it and I was um, stunned by it, uh, very moved because it was the, the topic was the, um, um, the trial of um, the, the parents of a little girl. Uh, and she had died uh, from uh, their blows. Um, uh, And uh, what was uh, really uh, upsetting was that many people had tried to save her, had suspected that there was a problem with this little girl that could be uh, social workers, but be before that school teachers, mm -hmm. uh, school principals, doctors, and nobody um, w was able to stop uh, this catastrophe. So I was um, wondering how it could be possible. I, I remember I was... Uh, walking in the street, uh, lo looking at my smartphone when I uh, came across this fact, and I just sat on and um, sat down and uh, began to 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 copy what the witnesses were were telling at the trial. Uh, and first of all, the the brothers, uh, the the girl's brother. Mm -hmm. And so I I I tried to to understand what happened, and I um, I began to develop what the witnesses were telling about uh, what they had done, what they hadn't uh, done. And uh, that's the way I fictionalized uh, it. That's the way fiction came into the, hmm. the real fact, because I wanted to make uh, the reader understand what regrets, what remorses uh, they felt um, after they, they knew the girl was dead. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And that's, that was terribly tragical. So I, I wanted to convey this emotion to the reader. Then uh, there comes an intimate question. Uh, is there any aspect of yourself that you identify with your anti-hero or anti-heroine Diana in the book? Um, I'm not sure I identify to this um, heroine or anti-heroine. Uh, because she's the, the 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 vacuous center of the story. She's she's not here. She she is the one of whom everybody is speaking, but she hasn't any access to speech. Uh, but on the other hand, I, I believe I identified strongly to witnesses, um, mainly um, the first school teacher and the brother uh, of Diana. Um, I believe we all have situations that we can remember hmm. when we did not act as we could have um, acted um, uh, in front of uh, friends or relatives that were in, in bad shape. And sometimes we regret deeply what we have not done. And that's the, the feeling I would like to convey to the reader, I believe. 
So this uh, tragical impression of not having been uh, the, the right person in front of a uh, catastrophe. I see, I see. And when we look at the uh, technical stuff that you have chosen uh, in your book, um, it is a different narrative style as well as I'm concerned. Why this particular and unique style of narrating, I would ask, uh, did you do it on purpose? Because when we look at it, well, it's a theatrical like narrative. Why is so? Yeah, uh, it's a th theatrical like uh, narrative. That's right. Uh, actually, it came from the very first um, steps uh, at the beginning. I, uh, there was, there were, I believe, some descriptions of the characters of the situations, but uh, very soon I decided um, uh, to um, to stay with the um, monologues of the different characters that express themselves about yeah. what they have done, what they haven't done. And um, I believe this came from the judicial origin of the novel, because when you are in court, uh, witnesses appear in court, mm -hmm. uh, they express themselves about what they have to say, um, and then they disappear. And uh, we, uh, we pass from a, a witness to another. And it's uh, a little bit like that, that I wrote this book, uh, because I wanted to convey to the reader uh, what the witnesses had to say. So they don't speak um, with, with uh, the other witnesses. And that's why it's not a play. Uh, it's indeed not a play. It's a, it's a choral novel. Uh, they, it's a succession of monologues, but uh, it, illust it illustrates also the lack of communication between them. I that's believe right. the topic of the novel is that's the lack of communication between people that uh, tried, some of them tried hard, some not, but um, the lack of communi communication between people that were in front of a catastrophe. Well, this is a very important point that you remarked, lack of communication. And uh, in the prologue of the book, Diana, as described by her former teacher, is a child uh, with conflicts. Uh, she is yielding to lack of communication as well. And I would like to ask if what her main wound or fault or problem is. Yes, I, I would say that is true. She is um, a child with interior conflicts. Um, actually, she n never really speaks about what she goes through. And she, um, um, she, she never recognizes her parents' uh, fault, uh, her parents' guilt, mm. and I believe she wants to protect them. She is very loyal to, to them, and uh, she tries to idealize her situation. She would like to be a princess. Uh, she always speaks about what she leaves at home during the weekends, uh, and, and it's a hint for the school teacher to, cons to, to see that the reality is not what, she, mm. what the little girl is saying. Uh, I, I believe she is a broken princess, uh, a disharmonious princess, and that's why I, I chose uh, this name, Diana. Because, that's on purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, because at, in, in the real fact, uh, the little girl was called Marina, and uh, Diana was, uh, for me, uh, a way to indicate to the reader that she is a broken princess, a princess that is going to die tragically. Uh, so this, um, this paradoxical situation... The, the fact that she protects her parents makes her uh, um, all the more tragical, I would say, because she she impresses us be because of this uh, um, uh, um, will of not saying what what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, in the center, um, when we look at it, the criticism of the family is almost the main theme, mm -hmm. maybe the, the the unique main theme. Yet, um, can we see the parents in the book as villains? I doubt about it because you have portrayed them as ordinary and quote unquote normal individuals most of the time throughout the book. Uh, I wonder it. Mm -mm. Why is that? Um, f first of all, we have to say that the parents are the first culprits. You know, that's that's a fact. That's that was. Uh, uh, um, uh, visible at the at the trial, uh, so they were condemned, and 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 they were their guilt is enormous. Uh, but in the same time, I, I wanted to understand the process that leads them 
uh, from the birth uh, of Diana to, to her death. And at the beginning, we see that uh, she was abandoned uh, because the parents were separating. So they abandoned the, the girl uh, before taking her back when they um, went back together again. And uh, the problem is that the, the, the mother-child bond could not be woven again, uh, or the, the father-child bond uh, could not be woven either. Um, so I, I believe I'm, I'm, I wanted to show the evil. They, they are evil. But um, maybe more than that, I was interested in the process that leads apparently normal persons mm. uh, to this kind of evil. And, and the second thing I, I could say is that, on the other hand, they look good. They look very good. And that's a part of their perversion. They um, uh, are able to show a, a kind face to the social workers. Uh, the other children are not mistreated. They are not abused. And everybody is asking why a girl should be mistreated and the other ones mm -hmm. uh, not. And this common sense is um, mistaking us, mistaking all uh, 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 lots of uh, witnesses, and uh, so this this normality of the parents is is uh, partly real and partly a fake. I, I would say. Yeah, I see that. I see that. On the other hand, um, your book well includes criticism of the family, but also also offers a similar critique of other institutions in the society as well, which I mostly like. Uh, for example, gendarmes, educators at school, the prosecutor, child welfare department, and so on. And uh, they are all watching the case as if they are watching a Netflix movie or document, right? And uh, gazing this tragic event. And what do you say about the other institutions, Alexander Sura? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's right. There is a criticism of uh, several institutions and of the lack of communication between them. Uh, but I wouldn't put them all on the same level. I would say there are some mm. people, some professionals that try their best to rescue Di Diana, to to save her. Um, I would say some of the teachers, uh, uh, one of the gendarmes, uh, one of the doctors at the hospital, they try to make reports to to tell all the suspicions um, they have. Well, it's not enough. Yeah. yeah, it's never enough uh, because the procedures are not enough because uh, the system is, is not... Uh, all corrupt, say. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's <laughs> corrupt, but I, I would say that uh, it, it, it's, um, um, it, it doesn't work uh, easily enough to, to make the, the catastrophe n not happen. And um, uh, I, I believe the, the, the people that, that try their best to save Diana, they go beyond their role. But many of the witnesses, they, they are just in their role. They, they just act uh, as the procedure um, uh, tells them to act. Right. And maybe in some situations, the procedures are not enough. Mm -hmm. uh, in some professions, you have to go beyond sure. uh, your role. So, um, so that's what I'm trying to, to show, I believe, and also to show the um, prejudices some professionals have. For example, the school uh, doctor, she believes that family should be a, a nice place to live in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She believes that if one child is mistreated, the other ones should also be uh, mistreated. So I try to show um, how these biases, these uh, prejudices uh, lead uh, her to a mistake. I see. And uh, I, I would say every situation is very specific uh, among these professionals that are all around I see. Diana. I see. Uh, and we have grandma and right. auntie uh, we see them, especially uh, Auntie, uh, in, in the beginning of the book. Right. Uh, and how would we uh, evaluate their roles? Uh, because they are mother's relatives, actually. Mm -hmm. If they were father's relatives, because mom and uh, dad are quite different in character, uh, would it be different? Yeah, I don't know if it would be different. It's just a reader's comment, right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's very interesting. I, um, I'm probably interested 
myself in these um, characters, in, in the mother's relatives, because at the beginning, uh, the mother is alone with the, with the kid, uh, the father uh, left, and uh, she is by her own mother mm -hmm. uh, when she decides to abandon uh, Diana. And she's also living with her Uh, with the grandmother of Diana when she decides to take her uh, back. So um, I believe the, the, the mother's family plays a specific role in this story. Maybe uh, it doesn't appear to be a very positive role because they, they, <laughs> they cannot stop the tragedy, yeah. uh, whereas they see the first uh, steps of this mistreatment. Uh, but I would say it... Um, it It was a, a very strong question um, uh, to me when I saw the beginning of the story. Uh, what what should you do when you see that your daughter is mistreating her own daughter? Will, will you denounce? Good question. Yes. Will you denounce your own daughter uh, with the risk uh, of not seeing again your granddaughter? And this is what happens uh, finally when when the grandmother decides to uh, make a report. Uh, she, she will never see again her granddaughter and her daughter because the parents uh, fly away with the, uh, with the daughter not to be arrested. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is a very strong question about uh, family relationships. I see, but on the other hand, we have the brother. And, right. and brother's relationship with Diana, what does it represent? Yes. Well, to me, it's the main character. It's a yeah. very strong character. Even if we don't see him much, we don't hear him much. But at, at the end of the book... Uh, He has the last words. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a very important character because he's very paradoxical. So uh, he's um, as well a victim as um, uh, an accomplice, I would say, because he sees uh, almost everything that has to be seen. He hears many things, but he never d denounces his parents by mm. uh, out of loyalty mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to them. And um, I, um, I, I, I put myself in, in, the, in the place of this uh, boy because at the end, at the trial, uh, he, uh, he has under, understood what happened really, what role he played in this tragedy. And uh, he's going to live all his life with, with this uh, burden, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, with this remorse. So it's a very tragical character to me and a, a very strong one. And a very tragic confession as well. At right. the end of the book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, maybe the book was written to go to these last words. They, they were the, the first ones I, right. I read. I, I took some of the uh, words that I read in the article mm -hmm. and I put them in the last monologue. And this is the, the key uh, of, of the book, I believe. And it's a ch challenging situation. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, uh, a missing child's report appears and it represents something different for everyone in the book. Mm. Uh, yet it also leaves behind uh, a trace of a cold-blooded murder. What do you think about it? Uh, it's true that the parents try to cover up the crime. Uh, they, they declare, they indicate that the, the child is missing. Um, uh, I, I don't know if it's a cold-blooded murder. I would say that violence Uh, against Diana is at the core of their relationship and of their relationship to Diana. Uh, so they, they don't uh, master this, uh, this violence. Mm. Uh, it's, it's an impulse. Um, so I don't know if it's a cold-blooded uh, murder, uh, but it grounds their relationship to, to her. And uh, it's, it's right that they cover up this this uh, this this uh, this uh, death at the end see uh, for me it's actually a cold blooded murder and uh, since it has its own clues mm. um, for myself actually why didn't you consider writing this book as a quote unquote detective or a thriller story um i actually i think i um Uh, Did you think about it? Y yeah, uh, I, I'm, a, a film was made out of the book and it looks more like a detective story at the end. Um, but I believe I was more uh, interested, I've ever been more interested in tragedies than in thrillers. And that's why I wanted the reader to know from the very beginning what happens hmm. at the end. So the question is not 
to know what is going to happen, but how was that made possible? Uh, the, the, the main topic of the book is um, the story of the witnesses, maybe more than the story of the little girl and of uh, her parents. And I wanted the reader to ask oneself what what would have done, what, would, mm. uh, what, what should be done in this uh, uh, situation. And uh, this is a very strong ethical question, I that's believe. It. And, that's it. and that's why I chose this, uh, this um, style, this, uh, um, mm. uh, this uh, tragic uh, way, framework. Yeah. I see. I see. Well, your book has ha recently been translated into Turkish. And uh, how were the readers' views and comments in Turkey and France? Did you get any? Yes, yes. Yeah. Ma many comments. Many I comments. Yeah. Very glad. Uh, in Turkey of, too? Yeah, in Turkey oh, too. Last year I, I, I came to Istanbul and I met some readers. Um, and I was uh, stunned by similarities uh, of reactions. Uh, Any differences? So, some differences. Uh -huh. uh, in, in, in France, I met many professionals that told me about uh, cases echoing the one of uh, Diana. And I was very upset and very surprised to discover this. And actually, the, the Turkish readers were um, um, moved by the same um, facts as the Uh, the, the the French ones, mm -hmm. but maybe in in Turkey I was um, um, I, I, um, I was impressed by the fact that many readers asked me questions about general questions I would say about the family about institutions uh, about society mm. in, in general um, asking me if the book was putting in question the the society in general uh, whereas I would say the French readers. Uh, maybe we're more interested in um, individual uh, uh, questions, in uh, individual aspects of, hmm. of the story. Hmm. So I was um, very much interested by these questions in, in, in Turkey. Uh, oh, what other languages has it been translated into? In Slovenian wow. and Italian. And I'm maybe I'm uh, forgetting an, another one, but I, another. yeah, it was a success. And okay. I'm very glad of it. So uh, your first book has been uh, awarded. Um, uh, and uh, how, how do you feel about it? About the, the price? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's a real pleasure for and me. And it came from Turkey. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it's a pleasure because I was here in Istanbul last year mm. and I'm coming back. Um, and uh, um, it's, it's a surprise also to me because the book I... Uh, I, I wrote it uh, almost 10 years ago. Uh, I was not supported by any publishing house at that time. I, I was not published at all. And uh, now to see that um, uh, readers from a different culture are um, moved by this book, this uh, book I wrote so much, so, so long ago, uh, is uh, very moving to me. So, yeah. And any other projects now waiting? Uh, well, yes, in your I... Room? I have written um, three other books, so I hope they, to be they can be <laughs> translated into Turkish. And, and, and I have several projects uh, uh, inspired by reality or um, personal experiences as well. You have deep connection with the reality, right? Yeah, I, hope so. I hope so. Okay. Alexander Sora, thank you so much. Uh, you, uh, you were here and it was an honor to host you in our studio. Thank you very much to you, Miguel. Okay, uh, now, well, we've discussed about Sakar, La Maladroite in French, uh, and uh, Alexander Sora, the writer himself, uh, talk about the details about the novel. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it has been awarded uh, the, the 2024 NDS Liter Literature Prize by Notre Dame de Sion. Uh, we're so proud of it. Hope to see you again, uh, and bye.